So today we will start uh, with the uh, bivariate correlation in, because this was the session which was supposed to be completed yesterday, but we could not do it yesterday. So we will, because this is a part of association. Remember, we started uh, with this notion that the association can be between the categorical variable and it uh, can be between the two scale variable. There can be like one ordinal and uh, one continuous also, but we are not dealing those associations. Here we are dealing with the two categorical, which we have seen yesterday, like chi-square test of association and chi-square test of two proportion. And today's session, we'll see the association between the two continuous variable and the choice of test is the bivariate correlation. So we'll see what are the assumptions. And yesterday also we talked about the assumptions. So you, whenever you are writing your result, please write about the assumptions also that uh, like in case of a chi-square, the most important assumption is that each in each cell, the expected cell frequency is at least five, or if it is not five, then you can write that since it was less than five. So you have uh, like applied either Fisher exact or the eighth correction or whatever. If any modified version of chi-square value you are taking, you have to specify that. So you should specify the assumptions. Similar in correlation also, you have few assumptions before once you uh, start and the Assumption of normality that we don't test in the chi-square. Why we don't test? Because chi-square is a non-parametric test. So there's no need to go for a as a assumption testing for the normality. But today we'll see in correlation, before we apply this Pearson's correlation, because correlation, there are many types of correlation. So you need to check for the assumption of normality also. And in a normality, we talked regarding the shapiro will test and we talked about the QQ plot and we also talked regarding the sample size. If you have got a large sample size, even if we have seen yesterday, remember systolic blood pressure and age, we have seen that if the sample size is more, like let's say in this data set, it was 180. So your distribution, if you take the value of shapiro will that p-value will always be less than 0 0.05 which will wrongly attribute the distribution to be non-normal. But in case of large sample size, that's why you should always go for the subjective type of judge judgment of normality, which is the QQ plot, the graphical presentation. That is one of the best way to assess the normality. So here in this session, we'll see the basic concepts, the various research questions for which we need correlation as a preferred mode of statistical test, the assumptions and the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis, what are the commands to perform uh, this uh, bivariate correlation, how to write the interpretation, and then we'll summarize once again the commands. So coming to the research questions, first you see that if I want to, if my research question is uh, whether I uh, want to see any relationship between the serum vitamin D level and serum calcium level. So both these two variable, serum vitamin D and serum calcium, they are continuous in nature. Can, continuous means scale yesterday. In continuous variable in JAMOV, we name them as a scalar variable, which is shown by a small yellow scale in the software. The second research question could be if you want to know whether there is any relationship between sleep duration and the percentage of marks obtained in the final examination. And here the sleep duration is again a continuous variable and the percentage of marks also is a continuous variable. The third research question could be if I want to know whether the female literacy rate and infant mortality rate is associated or not. So female literacy rate is also a continuous variable and infant mortality rate is also a continuous variable. So to answer all these research questions, uh, in all these research questions, what have been observed? That there is one continuous variable and we want to know the relationship of this continuous variable with another continuous variable. And the appropriate statistical test for such type of research question is the bivariate correlation 
which is also known as the Pearson's correlation because this is for the to uh, use this test there are certain assumptions we will see uh, the data should be normally distributed and the there should not be significant outlier so correlation is used to determine the strength and direction so if you see there are two terms here first is the strength of association and the second is the direction of linear relationship so there if you see the value there is a two thing there is a sign plus or minus and there is a value so the value tells you about the strength of association and the sign tells you regarding the direction of association but if you are making categories of a continuous variable like we did yesterday remember we have used the transform option to make a categorical variable out of a continuous variable so if you are using options like this or if you are converting your variable then you cannot apply the correlation that is the pearson's correlation like if i am classifying this vitamin d level in less than 10 nanogram per deciliter and more than equal to 10 nanogram per deciliter or serum calcium level less than 5 and more than 5 then what could be if i am just converting these two continuous variable into categorical variable then what be, what would be the appropriate uh, test of association in in this case yes all of you please type in the chat box yes dr bharat is very right chi square test so similarly yes dr kanan and dr nirmal Dr. Selva Raju, all of you are perfectly right that since these two, we have converted them to a categorical variable. So there is a association. And if you want to test the association, we'll go for the chi-square. Next, like again, we are converting this sleep duration to less than six hours and more than equal to six hours or percentage of marks less than 50% or more than equal to 50%. So again, in female literacy also, if you are converting it into the low and high and infant mortality rate as low and high, and if you are uh, seeing the association or estimating the association between these two, then you cannot apply the bivariate correlation. Instead, the chi-square test will be the right choice for such association. So what are the various underlying assumptions before we go for this correlation? So first is that there should be two different continuous variable and they should be paired. So remember, this paired thing is very important. What do you mean by paired? That means it should be from the same individual. Like if you are doing like the previous example, sleep duration and percentage of marks. So those two variables will be from the same student. So from one student, I will measure, I will ask the history of sleep and I will take his or her marks. So this we mean by the paired. I have seen many people what they do. Like if you see that if there are there is a, a different set of people like maybe case and control. So may, many times what they think that they will apply the same variable on two different set of people. So that that should not be there. Yes. So it should be the variables from the same subject and that we mean by the paired variables. And then there needs to be linear relationship between these two variables. And how do we see this linear relationship? We see this by a scatter plot. And Jamovi, it plots the scatter plot in the same window. So you can then and there see whether there is a linear relationship or not. And if there is no linear relationship, then that this assumption is violated then you need to go for another test. And there should not be any significant outlier. So these uh, uh, bivariate correlation, they are very sensitive to outliers. So if there are few outliers, like one, two or three, that is okay, but there should not be too many outliers uh, in case. And how do we test for, uh, for the outliers? How do we check for the outliers? Yes, what to plot? to see whether there is any, any outlier or not. Yes, box plot, perfect. 
So you have to plot box plot. So whatever we have learned yesterday, we have to apply this today just to see the assumption and just to check the assumption. And then the last is we need to satisfy the assumption of normality. Why? Because the normality, this Pearson correlation is a parametric test. And if the data is normally distributed, and again in normal distribution, we don't say that perfectly normal. We, we always tend to say it should be approximately normal distributed. That's why you will see in QQ plot also many times there will be few data points which will be lying away from that diagonal point. So we are not that strict that each and every data point should be along that diagonal line. If you see that roughly most of the data points are uh, across that diagonal line, you say that yes, it is the it is satisfying the assumptions of normality. Now we'll check these assumptions uh, over the data. Now coming to the properties of correlation coefficient R. So as I said that correlation coefficient has got two things. One is the sign and the second is the value. So it measures the strength of a linear relationship and the sign of correlation coefficient conveys the direction of relationship. Like if it is a positive, we say that it, it is directly related. That means if you are increasing one variable, the other variable is also increasing. If it is negative, then that means there is an inverse relationship. What do I mean by inverse relationship? If you are increasing one variable, the other variable is decreasing. And then the uh, this magnitude of correlation coefficient R conveys the strength. And there is a classification we will see. Uh, we classify them like weak correlation, moderate correlation, strong correlation. We'll see like we have seen effect size yesterday. And it ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. And correlation, again, like we have learned in the chi-square, that, that chi-square does not imply causation. Similarly, this correlation also does not imply causation. This only says that, yes, there is association between the two variables. So, like I said, we classify this strength of association into three categories, small correlation, moderate correlation, and strong correlation. What is small correlation? So the value of correlation coefficient, if it is less than 0.3 and starting from 0.1 to 0.3, we call it as a small correlation. If it is 0.3 to 0.5, we call it as a moderate. And anything more than 0.5, we call it strong correlation. And in case of doing the factor analysis and checking the uh, like scale development and checking the all other this principal component analysis also, this correlation has got a very important role. In fact, I can say that whole analysis of that factor analysis and the principal component analysis is dependent on this correlation. And there we use this property of strong correlation many times, like more than 0.5 or 0.6. Even if in, in linear regression also, you will see that the linear regression and logistic regression, there is an assumption which we... Uh, call it as a multicollinearity. And this multicollinearity, we check with this correlation coefficient that the two variables, it should not be very much highly correlate, correlated to continuous variable. So this correlation basic, you are seeing it, but we use this correlation at many other higher statistics. Uh, and maybe you will learn slowly all those concepts. But for now, it is just, just remember that we check the association between the Two continuous variable, it has got a sign and it has got a value. And uh, this, uh, you can uh, classify it as a small, moderate and strong correlation. So, uh, Pragati is writing, I have read it as positive, negative and no correlation. So, uh, you mean to say, no, that is only the sign, positive and negative. No correlation means the correlation coefficient will be less than 0 0.1 or maybe it will be very minuscule or zero. Otherwise, definitely there will be some value. We'll see that. Many times you will find that if the value of that Pearson's R, R is zero, then it might be like, uh, you can say that there is no correlation at all. And then uh, Dr. Selvaraju is, what about the non-linear correlation? So if there is a non-linear, I said that, for that, you need to go for the other type of correlation coefficient probably. 
we see that it should be like uh, there is something known as the monotonic and non monotonic so that non linear correlation is the non monotonic type of correlation and for that either you need to transform the data there are ways for the transformation of the data and then you can apply the correlation or you can go for the spearman uh, or other like if it is a non collinear and what type of data is there if it is a ordinal then you can go for kindel tau and you can go for the other type of correlation which are there so this is the uh, linear versus non linear as you were talking so this is linear and this is non linear so you can see like it is a parabola here also you can see in, in such cases you may need to transform the data so now coming to the uh, coefficient of determination there is something known as the coefficient of determination and suppose you want to uh, like uh, if my value of correlation coefficient between serum vitamin d and serum calcium level is 0.5 similarly the value of correlation coefficient between the sleep duration and marks percentage is 0.7 or <coughs> excuse me or if the value of state literacy and infant mortality rate the correlation coefficient is 0.8 and you can see it is minus so these values only tells the strength and direction of linear relationship between the two values but if you want to know like uh, what is the uh, how what is the coefficient of determination so how i how i can define the coefficient of determination i want to know how much variance in one variable can be explained by the another variable so that is uh, the type of uh, question which you will be asking or you will be answering if you are trying to tell the concept of coefficient of determination so this is like the uh, if i want if i am interested in asking this question like the variation in serum vitamin d level from one person to another person can be explained by serum calcium level by what percentage so i just want to say that if there is a variation in serum vitamin d level from one person to another person so how much this serum calcium level is responsible for that variation similarly if i am interested in seeing the variation in percentage marks obtained from one student and how this is affecting from one student to another then by what a percentage this sleep duration is explaining that similarly the variation in infant mortality rate from one state to another state can be explained by literacy rate by what percentage so this what percentage that means it tells you the coefficient of determination or the variation in the one variable how much the other variable is responsible for that variation so you just square this this is the r square and this so 0.5 r square will be 0.30 sleep duration and percentage of marks which is 0.7 you if you square it it is 49 and similarly the sleep literacy and infant mortality rate you can see it is 0.8 if you square it it will be 0.64 so you can say that 30% in case of first research question the variation in the 30% variation in serum vitamin d can be attributed due to the change in serum calcium the rest 70% is due to some other reasons which we are not saying here so this r square is has its use at many places uh, in checking the model in prediction model you will always see this r square and this r square there it conveys that you know that model is explaining how much accuracy or how much with what confidence or that uh, whole three factors if you are taking three factors as a model and if r square is 30% you say that 30% uh, changes or 30% changes in that dependent variable can be attributed due to the combination of these three predictor variable so there also it has got that use that r square which is again the coefficient of determination you will find these in the linear regression and the logistic regression as well now coming to few questions so ankita is uh, asking do we have to do correlation before doing any other test of significance basically correlation uh, it's not they it depends on your research question 
it is uh, see this workshop is basically for the basic data analysis and it is largely uh, targeted towards the pg students thesis and maybe for the guides who are mentoring their student for their thesis for advanced analysis we don't do this bivariate correlation isolated or maybe because generally you go for the other higher statistical tests but definitely as a as a starting point because as a pg thesis or maybe for a sts project for students of mbbs they we we ask them to put very simple tests and these like bivariate correlation and multi uh, co multiple correlation uh, that helps uh, them to understand the basics of statistics so uh, this is uh, the basic concepts and again in regression if you see if you apply that uh, before regression definitely we go for correlation because we check whether there is a association and then we see uh, for the strength i mean the amount of variation in that dependent variable so that's that is there again one person has asked the, uh, does correlation correspond to the slope of line so no that that slope is the regression line of best fit that is the regression line so correlation correspond means if there is a linear relationship that slope that intercept and slope and direction that is generally done in case of a regression for this correlation you see that if the line is straight that means if one variable is increasing the other variable is also increasing and uh, i think can you show me the other questions i think so i have to repeat the interpretation of coefficient of determination okay i am again repeating it and then dr godke is asking the variables we are taking for analysis will cover 100% of change is there any explanation for other variables which we are not taking in the analysis so actually like i said that these are very basic things and we are encouraging our pg students and the resident doctors to go for such tests but the kind of question like dr mohammed you are asking in general that 100% of change you know no prediction model or no number of variable can tell you 100% of change in your dependent variable so explanation will be like even if you are taking a regression uh where you take four five uh, model or the logistic or the linear regression this explains only like if it is explaining up till 70% it is very good because many things in the any variable it is largely to many of that is not explained so we say that if it is explainable till 70% also that is a very good uh, prediction or predictor so 100% change Yeah. we never we you can never predict that 100% of like coefficient of determination or anything so that is there for your answer coming to the definition of this uh, coefficient of determination so this r square tells you like what proportion of change in this serum and again this is only for two variable if you take multiple variable then this r square will change and that for that we go for a Log, uh, this regression coefficient so the more variable we change the r will keep on changing because right now it is just like odds those of you who have done a logistic regression and linear regression the more variable you take the odds keep on changing similarly if you take right now also we will see if there are multiple variables right now you are seeing only serum vitamin d and calcium r score as 0.5 maybe if you take other variable like maybe amount of sun exposure or uh, you can take uh, age or maybe any other factor which affects this calcium and vitamin d metabolism then this this r square might change this will not be 0.5 these examples are just to show you the interpretation of r square so like uh, if the value of r square is let's say 0.304 you have to multiply it by 100 to convert it into percentage so like i can say it is 30.4 percentage so what will i write i can say that 30% changes in the vitamin d level from one person to another person can be attributed due to the change in serum calcium level 
the rest 70% is due to some other factor which we are not committing right now here i am only telling about the serum vitamin d level and the serum calcium level now coming to the uh, dr abhishek he is writing that sometimes the term pseudo r square is used for regression how this is different from r square so basically this pseudo r square is for the non linear relation and r square is for the linear relation so that uh, uh, you will see that uh, the pseudo r square it it tells you uh, regarding if the linear there is a deviation from the linear uh, uh, relationship now dr santosh is writing should it be same number of values in both the groups 0.5 value 0.5 in each group a uh, 50 value in each group i i did not understand this question can you specify a little bit like 50 that means you want to say 50 values that means 50 number of sample can you elaborate 50 observation so sample size you want to say yes paired observation that should be same otherwise there will be if there are missing value it will write the missing value and it will take only those uh, people where all those two paired values are there otherwise like let's say if you have taken the serum vitamin d and calcium level you have got calcium level of 49 people and serum uh, vitamin d of 50 people so it will take 49 pairs only complete data so uh, did you get this okay so any other question should be should we go ahead so now coming to the null and alternate hypothesis you can see here that the null hypothesis will uh, convey that uh, the population correlation coefficient is equal to 0 and because ultimately we discussed yesterday remember that this is through sample statistics we are telling about the population parameter so in assumptions in null and alternate hypothesis we always talk about the population so we say that population correlation coefficient is equal to 0 and here we say that the population correlation coefficient is not equal to 0 that means there is no association between these two now coming to the questions so this is the question for the uh, i will first show you the a uh, bivariate correlation only between the two variable and here you can see let's say it is bmi and cholesterol so i'll go to this data set so let's see the variables which are the variables if i double click on the variables you can see that uh, there's a gender age socio economic status smoking status bmi score systolic blood pressure cholesterol vitamin d and cortisol so let's say if i have to apply the correlation between the bmi and cholesterol so how will i do that so first i'll check for the assumptions so how to check for the assumptions first is both the variable should be no uh, uh, continuous variable so this vitamin d and uh, this bmi and cholesterol they are continuous variable so my first assumption is right the second is it should be a paired value since you can see that i have calculated these two values from that same individual so the value are paired the third assumption was like there it should be like no significant outlier should be there so for that what i'll go i'll go to the descriptive in analysis you may go to exploration open the descriptive and in descriptive move the two variables which which is the bmi and the cholesterol and then you can go to the plot you can click on the box plot and on the box plot you can see the it's it's outlier so and you can report the outlier so in cholesterol you can see there is no outlier in case of a, a bmi you can see there are 1 2 3 and 3 6 outliers are there 
And what are these outliers? What are these numbers? 37, 4, 53 and 106. Yes. What are these numbers? Anyone? Reference numbers. Yes. So these are the ID number basically. That means case number 37 or 4 or 53 or 106. They are, yes, serial number. Observe. Agree. So since out of 180, if there are 7, you may take a call. So ideally, participants ask like what should we do? So you can do two things. Since the sample size is large, you can just report these. That there were 7 outliers in the BMI score and there were no outlier in the cholesterol. But you have since if you are too sure that these are the correct data. So you may go ahead with taking these outliers into the analysis. But if you like just see that some very erroneous values are there and you want to, you don't want, you, you know that this is a lab mistake or maybe an entry error, then, then what can you do? Either you can replace this with a mean value or with the next higher value in your data set. You can do that. So there are ways to handle outlier. So what did I tell? Either you just see these, like I can go and see this BMI score of let's say, just for example, I'll see the four number. So I'll go to the data. This is the fourth individual and I'll see the BMI score. So it is 39.5. So I may check and see that what if it is very high or not. If it is high and I think, no, this is not possible. So then what can I do? I can replace this with the next higher value. So next, you have to see the range of these. Let's say if it is either there are two ways. You can replace this with mean, mean of this BMI. Or you can replace this with the next higher value. Or you can filter this and you don't take this into the analysis. So there are ways to handle this. So right now I decide that no, I will go, I'll keep these outlier in my analysis because many times the researcher and the clinician, they're very sure. No, that person was very obese and I want to keep this. So they will keep this in the analysis. And since seven outlier out of 180 is not a very significant number, so you can go ahead. And the other way is you can do uh, another thing that you can check with the outlier and without the outlier and see the value of correlation coefficient if it is getting affected much or not. So these were the, uh, I, I have just reported that these were the seven outliers. Now coming to the QQ plot. So QQ plot is for the normality. So you can straight away check this also here in the descriptive. So QQ plot, if you'll see, this is approximately normally distributed both. So I can go ahead with the Pearson's correlation. So, uh, and uh, again, there is a scatter plot. So I said that scatter plot is, calc uh, is there in the same window. So I will, again, this BMI and cholesterol, I'll just move this back. If you open this, this is the correlation matrix. You can move the BMI score and the cholesterol here. I have checked for the assumptions and then what is the value of correlation coefficient? You can see it is the 0.6 and the p-value is less than 0 0.01. So, and then uh, you can see that here I will, the choice of test, there is a Pearson, there is a Spearman and there is a Kendall Tau. So, this Kendall Tau is for the ordinal data. If there is ordinal data like scale, a uh, variable like yesterday we were talking about the highly disagree to agree and there are two ordinal and if you want to do the correlation between those two ordinal variable then you do this option of Kendall Tau. Otherwise for all to this example either you use Pearson or Spearman. Since all my assumptions are satisfied I'll go with this Pearson. You may click this uh, report significance that will be already there. This is flag significant correlation. That means it will give it give this as a star. You can see there's a star. And then plot. So if you click this plot, you will see that this. 
this plot you can see. This is the plot. So it is, you can say that it is uh, approximately linear. You cannot say this is non-linear. And uh, then th that's it. If you want like other things to, if you want that density, it will show you the, these are the two density plots. But again, I only want that correlation matrix that will give you the correlation matrix between this and this. So that's the correlation. Now, how to write the interpretation? So if you see the interpretation, this is one table where you can see the value of correlation coefficient and that coefficient of determination, I have just multiplied this and 45% was the value. So I have just written that a Pearson product moment correlation was run to assess the relationship between the cholesterol concentration and BMI. Scatter plot showed the relationship to be linear with both the variables no outliers and normally distributed as shown by the QQ plot. Or you can write that there were, like I can say seven outliers in the distribution of cholesterol and no outlier in the distribution of BMI. Sorry, seven outlier in the distribution of BMI. And then I may write the value of a significant correlation coefficient. So here it is 0.67. So I will write that with a, a P value. So that is there. Now coming to the uh, multiple correlation. So multiple, generally we run multiple correlation where you have got more than two, three, four variables. Here you can see that BMI, cholesterol, cortisol and vitamin D. There are four, uh, this thing, variable. Although I think table in have, we have made only three, but again, you can apply more also. So here, if I move more, similarly, you will check uh, the assumptions of uh, linear uh, assumption of uh, this normal distribution from the descriptive. So I assume that you know now. So if you I uh, take like so let's say age also and vitamin D also, cortisol also. So you will see that there is a correlation matrix. Here you can see. And it will tell you the values. So this now that Cholesterol and BMI, you will see it is 0.67. Here with age, it is 0 0.02. So it is very less. Then with vitamin D, it, you can see it is 0 0.2 BMI and vitamin D. And this also cholesterol and vitamin D is uh, again 0 0.2. So these are not significant. This is significant. This is significant. With the star, you can say that these correlations are significant. So similarly, you can write the interpretation. You can check with these, go to, uh, go to the descriptive and check their distribution also, whether they are normal or not. And then only you can move these into this window. Otherwise, you will have to go for the Spearman if they are not normally distributed. And if you come down, you can see these are the uh, various uh, plot. You can see the scatter plot here, this, this, and this. So this seems to be linear. You can see the lines here. So this you can copy and paste. So if you right click this, if you want to show it in your result, you can do that. So I may go and at the last, if you So the graph will be pasted and then you can write the interpretation. So this is how we perform the bivariate and the multiple correlations. So yes, interpretation part of this multiple variable. If I go to, you can write the assumptions like you can see here that Pearson product moment correlation was uh, run to find out the relationship between the cholesterol, cortisol and vitamin D level. And preliminary analysis showed the linear relation, the relationship to be linear with all pair of variables. All variables were normally distributed as indicated by QQ plot. And there were these many outliers if they are there in vitamin D and cortisol, but they were kept in the analysis. So I have written about the assumption. The main part of the interpretation is you have to write uh, about the assumptions. And then uh, you have to mention about the values of correlation coefficient. So generally what we write, 
we can take the significant correlation from this table. So I may write here that uh, this is the, the significant correlation was found between the BMI and cholesterol and between the vitamin D and BMI and cholesterol and vitamin D. That, that's it. Because you can see there are only three correlations which are significant. This, this, and this. Because it, it has only got that star mark. Otherwise, all other, they are not significant. So only these three correlations were significant. The re and you can say about the value. Like here, it is a strong correlation. And this uh, is a moderate correlation. So you can write that in the interpretation. Yes, strength and linear relationship is to be... Uh, so in all these cases, you can see they are all are positive. The negative sign is there here, age and the cholesterol, but these are not significant, so no need to write. But these all three are positive. So yes, you will write. And strength also, whether it is a moderate correlation and the yes p-value. So all these three star... Can you see a star mark here? So if you click this here, there is an option flag significant correlation. Because if it is a larger correlation table, it takes time to see whether it is significant or not. So if you click this flag significant correlation, then what, what is there? That this will be like, uh, you can see that there will be star mark over this correlation coefficient. That means these are the correlation coefficient with the significant value. And if you want like this to be uh, with the many times you will see that they report it with the uh, this uh, value of this correlation coefficient R 95% confidence. So you can click this 95% confidence interval and then you can write that also in the interpretation. So this was, but again I said like isolated by uh, this multiple correlation Generally, for advanced analysis, we not, we don't do. It is a part of the... Because after correlation, you have to go for the regression. So generally, we do the regression and there only as a part of assumption testing, which is the multicollinearity between all independent continuous variable. So there are other tests. There is a correlation also, but there are other tests like variation inflation factor and the tolerance with which we check multicollinearity. But yes, as a beginner, or maybe when you are submitting your thesis as a PG student, uh, you should apply these tests because there we only judge that whether you have learned the basics of research or not. We don't want you to put, because the students are very like, uh, they will think that they will apply all these higher level tests they uh, in their analysis. And in that way, they will skip these basic things. So these are largely for the understanding. Uh, but yes, as a if you are a faculty, maybe, and if you are going for a manuscript public publication in a good reputed journal, so there, this isolated correlation matrix, we don't do as such very commonly. It is a part of regression because you don't end till correlation. You will go one step ahead. So if you do that regression, whether it is logistic or linear, this part is taken care of there through correlation or through other uh, tests. So there you just write one or two lines that uh, there was significant correlation between these two continuous or no significant. So you check for the assumption of multicollinearity. Am I making myself clear to all of you? Okay, but but you should know the basic because once you know these basics or maybe if you know as a faculty, you can mentor your students because you have, you, you will be a PG guide or you will be supervising the STS project. So maybe many times your role is as a supervisor, those of you who are faculty in medical college. So as a supervisor, you should know how you have to mentor your students also. Uh, otherwise, like students, they are very nervous once they join the PG courses. Uh, they want to run all tests in their thesis. So you have to like guide them. They should go step by step. 
Okay, so Dr. Uh, Dr. Hilda Priya, we have conducted linear and logistic regression, many webinars and many workshops also. You can visit our YouTube channel of this Merit India and you will find many videos of this linear and logistic regression, various types of logistic like multinomial, binary, binary and maybe the, uh, this, uh, what to say? Yes, multinomial, binary and ordinal regression. So all these regressions we have covered earlier. I, I, I was just going through the chat. So you people have requested few other workshops also like basics of regression, maybe some higher one. We will definitely uh, do that. But first we are now uh, on to this meta-analysis. So once we uh, conduct a workshop on meta-analysis, then only we will go for any other workshop as requested by you people. But till that you people can visit, those of you who want to learn, it is all the uh, recorded lectures with all the materials are there. Those of you who are a self-learner, since now you know the basics of Jamuvi. So there won't be any problem in seeing the other options of Jamuvi. You can see the theory and then you can try using, uh, I think we have shared that, uh, the data set also. So in that YouTube uh, link, you will find the data set also. If not, you can request, we'll share the data set, you can practice and you can learn. So if, if you people are clear up till this point, then we may go ahead with the breakout room. You. So it is a request from mentors, uh, try to keep this breakout room uh, uh, not very long, like maybe 20 minutes or so. Dr. Ajay is writing, is this correlation test only applied interventional or? No, no, it, it can be applied both observational and interventional, both. Okay, so dummy set requested is not found in drive. drive. It's in drive? Hmm. Yes, Dr. Shamshad is saying it is there in the drives. We have shared additional. And we have shared, yes. We have shared additional because you people have requested for the additional data set to practice. So in day and day one and day two, can you see that there is a, uh, you, day what, two, day two in day two you will find, day one kindly open Bharat that day two. Day one, two, mein, day one session two, mein correlation. Okay, it is correlation not... day one. Mein hi hai, man. Oh, oh, correlation, nahin, day correlation day 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 one, one mein session two. Mein. Oh, day one session two. Ha, ye na ki it is not reflected, means data set is not reflected nahin, Bharat. Reflected. Can someone else check just to confirm? Uh, because Dr. Bharat is saying it is not reflected. So maybe any other participant, can you open the drive and check? Uh, is your connectivity okay? Siva Priya is writing, it is opening. So Bharat, I guess maybe you can check because Google Drive many times if your bandwidth is low or maybe, can you redo it? Okay. So, uh, um, it was shared yeah. in the WhatsApp group also. And it is shared in the WhatsApp group also, Bharat. So, you can download from there. Mail pe bhi shared. Mail pe bhi shared. Hai. Okay. So, it is shared. Hai. Supriya, can you 